Abraha was the governor of Yemen under Najashi. So Najashi, not the same Najashi as the one that the Prophet and Sahaba emigrated to, but his father, that Najashi had conquered some areas of Yemen and he had sent his governor and his governor's name was Abraha. So Abraha was the governor of the Najashi in Yemen. And he saw his people every year go north. So he said, where are you guys going? So they said, we have to go to Hajj. He said, why? What is there? He said, there's the house of Allah. So he said, I will build you a house that is far better than any of your houses. And you will come for Hajj under here. So he built a massive cathedral because they were Christians. And it was out of glass and out of, can you imagine in Arabia to bring stained glass? because they had access to these architects and whatnot. And he built a cathedral in Yemen, the likes of which he thought would become the biggest temple of Christianity in the entire Arabian Peninsula. And he then said, all of you have to come over here rather than going to up north to the Kaaba. And when one of the Bedouins heard this, he went there, but he went there to relieve himself, number one and number two. And he went there and he did that. And he became so angry, Abraha, that he said, as revenge, I will destroy this house so people must come to my house. And that is why he gathered together his army. And of course, because they were from Abyssinia, so they had elephants. Otherwise, elephants did not live in the Arabian Peninsula as natural beasts over there. But because he was from Africa, so he had a group of African elephants. And of course, the people of Africa had trained the elephants to be instruments of war. And uh, this was when he marched to the Kaaba and he went with his army of around, they say some say eight and some say 20 elephants. And the chief elephant, by the way, his name was Mahmoud. And it is also said that the Quraysh left the city after making lots of dua. Abdul Muttalib is pleading in front of the Kaaba. Oh Allah, we cannot fight this army. They're too strong for us. They have these elephants. They have these thousand men, whatever. You take care of it. And they then left to the mountains. And this is when they faced Mahmoud to the, the Kaaba and they are telling him to go and go and go. And he would not go. Even if they whipped him, they beat him, they bled him. Elephant would not move. But whenever they turned him in any other direction, he would move in that direction. That is when large birds came. So stones from Jahannam. Imagine stones from Jahannam in this world. They're coming. And in front of their eyes, every stone hits an animal and a person and he literally dissolves. His skin dissolves and he becomes a pile of broken and molten flesh in front of the eyes of the people of uh, Quraysh. And it is said that Abraha himself suffered the worst fate and they carried him back and his skin is dissolving the entire way and he dies right before reaching his home in Yemen uh, so that he suffers the worst punishment that he's just about there and then he dies and he is buried over there. There's also some hidden wisdom here, some semi-mystical wisdom here that we have a Christian attacking a pagan, Abraha attacking Abdul Muttalib, and the Kaaba is the subject of attack. And neither of them is able to defend. In fact, the one is attacking and the other cannot defend. And Allah defends the Haram. And who was living in the Haram at the time? Amina. And she must have been pregnant with our Prophet So quite literally, because he's born in the same year, a few months later. So this means Amina, when the incident of Feel takes place, our Prophet is literally in the womb of Amina. So there's a huge symbolism here that Allah Himself protects not just the Kaaba, but what else? Our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And this is, it is as if to indicate that the Mushrikun could not protect the Kaaba. They're not worthy of the Kaaba. So Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala destroyed those who attempted to harm it because there will come now somebody who will be worthy of the Kaaba. The Quraysh have not been worthy to the level they deserve. So somebody will now come and that is our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam who purified it of its idols, who made it the Qibla and who returned it to the glory that it was and that is the uh, initial house that Ibrahim Alaihi Salam built.